دعوتك ربي ومن لسواك فيا رب حقق دعاء من دعاك دعوتك والقلب في فرحة يناجيك يا خالقي في علاك وأنت البصير وأنت العليم بحال ونور الحجام انطياك رأيتك ربي في كل شيء فزاد اليقين بقلب رآك ففي الزرع في الضرع في الأنس بانت بدائع صنعك بعض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما أنفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين رب الشحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا يا سميع الدعاء يا رب العالمين my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutation upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we begin with the halaqa of the sublime beauty of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is about the lifestyle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a book called Al-Shama'il Al-Muhammadiyah that is authored by Imam Muhammad ibn Isa Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala who died in year uh, uh, who died in year 279 after Hijrah rahimahullah ta'ala in it he brings a chapter uh, of Firash Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what has been narrated concerning the mattress Firash of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ali ibn Hujan narrated to us saying that Ali ibn Mushir narrated to us from Hisham ibn Urwa who narrated from his father Urwa who narrated from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said innama kana firash rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alladhi yanamu alayhi min adami hashwuhu leafun innama kana firash rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alladhi yanamu alayhi min adami hashwuhu uh, hashwuhu leafun that the mattress on which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to sleep was made of a tanned leather whose filling consisted of palm fiber. Palm fiber. Okay. Palm fiber. This hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, his student Imam Muslim ibn Hajjaj and Imam Muhammad ibn Isa at-Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters, is Abu al-Khattab Ziyad ibn Yahya al-Basri narrated to us saying that Abdullah ibn Maymun narrated to us saying that Ja'far ibn Muhammad narrated to us from his father Muhammad who, who said, Su'ilat Aisha, that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was asked, Ma kana firash Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi baytiki? How was the mattress of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your house? She said, uh, قالت من أدم حشوه من ليفين that from uh, from the tanned leather whose filling consisted of palm fiber. وسئلت حفصة another wife of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم daughter of Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه that she حفصة رضي الله تعالى عنها asked ما كان فراش رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في بيتك how was the mattress of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم in your house she said مسحن Nashnihi sintaini fayanamu alay. Thinyatain. Nashnihi sintaini fayanamu alay. Falamma kana zata layla tin kultu law thanaituhu arba'a thinyat la kana auta alahu fathanaynahu lahu bi arba'i thinyat. Falamma asbah kal ma farashtum liya layla. Kalat kulna huwa firashuka illa ana thanaynahu bi arba'i thinyat. Kulna huwa auta ulak. Kala rudduhu li halatihi al-ula. Fa innahu manaatni wa ta'atuhu salati al-layla. She said when she was asked about the mattress of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said that a, co a coarse woolen sheet which we would fold into two layers upon which he would sleep. Then one night I said, Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha said, if, I only, uh, if only I was to fold it into four layers, it would be more comfortable for him, meaning for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I folded it into four layers for him. When morning came, he asked, what did you spread out as a mattress for me to sleep last night? When the Prophet asked this question, she said, We said, It is your normal mattress, except that we folded it four times. We said to ourselves, It would be softer for you. 
for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Restore it to its original condition with two layers. Restore it to its original condition. Why? Because its softness hindered me from praying at night, prevented him from praying at night. Meaning the qiyamul layl that he used to do, he could not." He could not get up for the Qiyamul Layl. That was the habit of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This hadith. Is it because it's comfortable? Or? Yeah, because it was four layers. Due to the comfort, he could not get up. So that is why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded uh, Hafsa Radiallahu Ta'ala uh, to put the mattress back to how it was. Meaning with the two layers of uh, palm fibers. So this hadith is actually in, uh, in a book, Akhlaq al Nabi. Having said that, this hadith is weak. However, the first part is authentic, meaning the part of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the narration of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So, this is about the mattress of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we're talking. So, the reason here we are talking about the mattress is that too much softness actually prevented Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to get up and have the Qiyamul Layl or the Salat al Nafila to be done. As if we were to be successful in our lives, the leadership that we follow is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's leadership, right? And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was in a habit of praying regularly, even outside the uh, obligatory prayers. Okay, the Salat al Witr, Qiyamul Layl, until the Fajr uh, uh, time comes, he would just pray Raka'ah Witr if there is no time, or maybe three Raka'ah, or mostly, most, mostly he would pray three Raka'ah of Witr. Now, what we are missing in our daily life is that if we want the success in our lives, then we need to leave the comfort. The most comfortable place for a human being would be the bed when the, uh, the person goes to sleep, right? Whether it is on the ground or above the, uh, above the, uh, above the ground, that is about an arm or two arms uh, above, the, uh, above the ground. The way that we have the uh, spring mattresses nowadays, what we do? We, when we are sleeping, we are sleeping with extreme comfort. Whereas, look at Rasulullah's hal. Look at the condition of Rasulullah. Two layers of, uh, of palm fibers consisted in what? In tanned leather. Okay, it was made of tanned leather whose filling, it, uh, the tanned leather mattress was filled with two layers of uh, palm fiber. So look at where he was and look at where we are. It is due to the dua of Rasulullah that we are in discomfort. And this comfort is leading us to the laziness and this laziness is leading us to not being uh, able to do the ibadah, ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not talking about the obligatory ibadat, rather the voluntary ibadat that would have been more successful for us. Why? يَنزِلُ رَبُّنَا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الثُّرُثِ اللَّيْلِ الْأَخِيرَ وَكَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ السُّلَةُ وَالسَّلَامِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, descends to the first heaven. Okay, in the last, uh, uh, last one third of the night. So he looks for the servants when the whole world is sleeping and he looks for the believers that would make a pray for a, a pray to him. He would look, he looks for the believers that would be calling him at night time when the whole world is sleeping. This was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Okay. Next chapter, my brothers and sisters. Majafi tawadu'i Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about the humility of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ahmad ibn Mani'a narrated to us along with Sa'id ibn Abdurrahman al-Makhzumi wa ghayru wahid and another one qalu they said that Sufyan ibn Uyayna narrated to us from Az-Zuhri who narrated from Ubaidullah who narrated from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma who narrated from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu Abdullah Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى ابن مريم إنما أنا عبد فقول عبد الله ورسوله. That رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said do not exceed the limits. Do not exceed the limits in praising me as did the Christians with the son of Maryam. And to this day they continue to do so. I am merely a servant. So say he is meaning Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the servant of Allah and his messenger. فَقُولُوا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ This is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim and Imam al-Tirmidhi, Rahimahumullah. 
As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Ali ibn Hujr narrated to us, he said that Suwayd ibn Abdul Aziz narrated to us from Humayd, who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was the khadim of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 years, as soon as Muhammad, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived in Medina from Mecca. Okay, that he said that Anna Mra'atan Jaat ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That a woman came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fakalat lahu, he, she said to uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna li ilayka haja. Fakal ijlisi fi ayy tariq al madinati shi'ti ajlis, uh, ajlis ilayki. That uh, uh, I have a need to ask of you. So he said, Sit in whichever road of the city of Medina you wish and I will sit with you. Sit in whichever road of the city, meaning Al Madina, you wish, and I will sit with you. This hadith, it is recorded by Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan, having said that this hadith is weak but is supported by a narration of Imam Muslim, another hadith that is in Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2326, to back it up, to say that the, uh, that the recording of Imam Muslim is authentic, more authentic. Another hadith is Ali ibn Hujan narrated to us saying that Ali ibn Mushir narrated to us from Muslim al-A'war who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya'ud al-marid wa yashhadu al-jana'iz wa yarkabu al-himar wa yajibu da'wat al-abd wa kana yawma bani Quraydhah ala himar makhtum bi habl min leaf wa alayhi ikaf min leaf that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to visit the sick Marid, attend the funerals, janais, ride donkeys, himar, and accept the invitation of a slave. On the day of Banu Quraidha, he was sitting on a donkey bridled with a rope made of palm fibers, fibers, and on it was a saddle that was also made of palm fibers. This hadith is recorded by Imam Muhammad ibn Isa Tirmidhi along with Imam ibn Majah rahimahumullah. This hadith is weak but the meaning is supported in other narrations regarding the tawadr of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Wasil ibn Abdul A'la al-Kufi narrated to us saying that Muhammad ibn Fudayl narrated to us from al-A'mash who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said, كان نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يدعى إلى خبز الشعير والإهالة السنخة فيجيب ولقد فيجيب ولقد كان له درع عند يهودي فما وجد ما يفكها حتى مات. That when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would be invited to a meal of barley bread and rancid oil, he would readily accept. He would accept the invitation. He had an armor that was put up as a as collateral with a Jew with a Yahudi and he died before she, he could repay the debt to retrieve it he died before he could uh, repay the debt to retrieve it this hadith is recorded by Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi in his Musnad volume 11 uh, page 993 this chain is weak but supported by other narration of Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi regarding uh, his uh, tawadr about accepting invitation from someone that would just make barley bread and this to this day may look really really insignificant but to Rasulullah it was nothing okay next hadith is Mahmud ibn Ghailan narrated to us saying that Abu Dawood al-Hafari narrated to us from Sufyan who narrated from al rabiah ibn Sabih who narrated from Yazid ibn Aban who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said Hajjah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala rahlin rath وعليه قطيفة لا تساوي أربعة دراهم فقال اللهم اجعله حجا لا رياء فيه ولا سمعة that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed hajj, performed pilgrimage on a worn out saddle upon which there was a fringed wrap around worth no more than four dirhams like four silver coins he said اللهم اجعله حجا لا رياء فيه ولا سمعة oh Allah make it a pilgrimage Devoid of ostentation, meaning not with showing off, okay, uh, uh, away from showing off or desire for frame, sum'ah, okay. So this hadith, even though it is weak, which is recorded by Ibn Majah rahmatullahi alayhi, but, sub, but is supported by another narration of Al-Awsat, okay, of a uh, uh, narration in Al-Awsat, okay, by Ibn Majah rahmatullahi ta'ala. 
Next hadith, my brothers and sisters. Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman narrated to us saying that Affan narrated to us. He said that Hamad ibn Salama narrated to us from Humaid, who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, لم يكن شخص أحب إليهم من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال وكانوا إذا رأوا لم يقوموا لما يعلمون من كراهته لذلك. There was no person more beloved to them, meaning to the Sahaba, than the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet they would not stand up for him when they would see him coming. Yet they would not stand up for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being seen coming because they knew that he disliked that. Standing up. Okay, the Sahaba knew that the uh, Rasulullah uh, uh, disliked the standing of the Sahabi when he would come. Okay, this hadith is recorded by Imam, uh, uh, Imam Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi. That is why when Rasulullah would come, it was customary to remain seated. But unfortunately, we see in some cultures where anyone that comes, that everyone would stand unnecessarily or anyone that would come they don't realize that actually it is helping him the comer to be boastful about billah in a negative way actually so un until rasulullah sallam said to an elderly sahaba i think it was muad bin jabal radiallahu ta'ala or sa'd bin uh hudayf ibn liban i can't remember the name of the sahabi then he said that qumu ila sayyidikum that stand up for someone uh, uh, or for your leader okay so that is exceptional case. But in general, in, in most cases, it was known that Sahaba did not stand up for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would come to, uh, to them. Okay, that was pretty normal. Okay. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters. Sufyan ibn Waqi' narrated to us saying that Jumay' ibn Umair ibn Abdurrahman al-Ijli narrated to us. He said, Amba'ana rajlum min bani tamim min waladi abi hala. That... A man from Bani Tamim informed us, Min Waladi Abi Hala, uh, from uh, the son of Abu Hala, Zawji Khadija, Yukna Abu Abdullah, his kunya was Abu Abdullah. He narrated from Ibn Abi Hala, uh, Ibn Abu Hala, who narrated from Al Hassan ibn Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He said, Sa'al tu Khali, that I asked my uncle, Hind Ibn Abi Hala, Hind, son of Abu Hala. As I mentioned earlier that Hind is not a name limited to women, rather it is gender neutral name. Okay, it is also man's name. He said that I asked my uncle, maternal uncle rather, Hind Abu ha Ibn Abu Hala, Hind, son of Abu Hala, Wakana was Safan. He was a narrator, descriptor. He would describe the uh, Sifat. Okay. عن حلية رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He was known to describe the beard of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Not not beard, rather so that حلية appearance, noble appearance of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. وأنا أشتهي أن يصف لي منها شيئا. And I would yearn that he would uh, give a sifat or description from uh, from the uh, from the noble appearance of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam any description faqal kana rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fakhman mufakhama yatala'la'u wajhuhu tala'lu alqamari laylat albadr fa dhakara alhadith bi tulihi qala alhasan fakatamtuha alhusayn zamanan thumma haddathtuhu fa wajadtuhu qad sabaqani ilayhi fa sa'alahu amma sa'altuhu sa'altuhu anhu wa wajadtuhu qad sa'ala abahu an madkhalihi wa makhrajihi wa shaklihi fa lam yad'a minhu shay'a qala al-husayn fa sa'altu abi an dukhuli rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa qala kana idha awa ila manzilihi jazza'a dukhuluhu دخوله ثلاثة أجزاء جزءا لله وجزءا لأهله وجزءا لنفسه ثم جزأ جزءه بينه وبين الناس جزءه بينه وبين الناس فيرد ذلك بالخاصة على العامة ولا يدخر عنهم شيئا وكان من سيرته في جزء الأمة إيثار أهل الفضل بإذنه وقسمه على قدر فضلهم في الدين فمنهم ذو الحاجة ومنهم ذو الحاجتين ومنهم ذو الحوائج فيتشاغل بهم ويشغلهم فيما يصلحهم 
والأمة من مساءلتهم عنه وإخبارهم بالذي ينبغي لهم ويقول ليبلغ الشاهد منكم الغائب وأبلغوني حاجة من لا يستطيع إبلاغها فإنه من أبلغ سلطانا حاجة من لا يستطيع إبلاغها ثبت الله قدميه يوم القيامة لا يذكر عنده إلا ذلك ولا يقبل من أحد غيره يدخلون روادا ولا يفترقون إلا عن ذواق ويخرجون أدلة يعني على الخير قال فسألته عن مخرجه كيف كان يصنع فيه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يخزن لسانه إلا فيما يعنيه ويؤلفهم ولا ينفرهم ويكرم كريم كل قوم ويوليه عليهم ويحذر الناس ويحترس منهم من غير أن يطوي عن أحد منه منهم بشره وخلقه ويتفقد أصحابه ويسأل الناس عما في الناس ويحسن الحسن ويقويه ويقبح القبيحة ويوه ويوهيه معتدل الأمر غير مختلف لا يغفل مخافة أن يغفل أو يميل لكل لكل حال عنده عتاد لا يقصر عن الحق ولا يجاوزه الذين يلونه من الناس خيارهم أفضلهم عندهم أعمهم نصيحة وأعظمهم عنده منزلة, منزلة أحسنهم مواساة ومؤازرة مؤازرة قال فسألته عن مجلسه فقال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يقوم ولا يجلس إلا على ذكر وإذا انتهى إلى قوم جلس حيث ينتهي به المجلس ويأمر بذلك يعطي كل جلسائه بنصيبه لا يحسب جليسه أن أحدا أكرم عليه منه من جالسه أو فاوضه في حاجة صابره حتى يكون هو المنصرف عنه ومن سأله حاجة لم يرده, لم يرده إلا بها أو بميسور من القول قد وسع الناس بسطه وخلقه فصار لهم أبا وصاروا عندهم وصاروا عنده في الحق سواء مجلسه مجلس علم وحلم وحياء وأمانة وصبر لا ترفع فيه الأصوات ولا تؤبن فيه الحرم وتثنى فلتاته متعادلين بل كانوا يتفاضرون فيه بالتقوى متواضعين يوقرون فيه الكبير ويرحمون فيه الصغير ويؤثرون ذا الحاجة ويحفظون الغريب quite long hadith but many things would be learned and from that because it is in the chapter of tawadu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about the humility of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many things can be learned it is between al hasan ibn ali who was the grandson of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as another grandson of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al husayn as well as ali ibn abi talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who was the paternal cousin and son in law of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was married to Fatima bint Muhammad radiallahu anha so Al Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said I inquired from my maternal uncle Hind ibn Abu, uh, uh, Abiha, Abu Hala radiallahu ta'ala uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu about noble features of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he had often described the noble features of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in detail that is why he was known as Wasaf, Hind bin Abu Hala. I felt that I should hear from him personally some of the noble appearance of Rasulullah so that I could make his description a proof and testimony for myself and also memorize them and if possible try to emulate and adopt them. So he said Rasulullah was majestic and esteemed. His face would shine with radiance of the moon on the moonlight night, moonlit night. Then he related the tradition in its full length. When he started describing Rasulullah he did not stop. The full length was mentioned actually. This is recorded by uh, 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 Muhammad ibn Isa Tirmidhi. However, even about this, you, uh, we, we need to go back to another chapter uh, that is on uh, that we have been through in page 70 of Ash-Shamail al-Muhammadiyah. As for Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said that I concealed it from Al Hussein for some time, I'd, meaning he did not say it to Al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, anhu. But then I related it to him only to find that he had beaten me to it, meaning he knew already. Okay, he therefore asked him, meaning Al Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, asked him about what he had asked him about, and he found that he had asked his father, meaning Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu about his entrance the dukhul of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his exit and ex uh, uh, khuruj of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his outward appearance 
So he did not leave anything out of it. Meaning Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not leave anything out of it when he was describing it to his another son, Al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I asked my father about the entry in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would enter his home. In which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would enter his home. He replied, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa entered his home, he divided his time into three portions. A portion for Allah, a portion for his wives and a portion for himself. Then he divided his portion further between himself and the people and he was assigning that in particular to the common folk and he was not keeping anything from them. As regards, uh, uh, regarding the portion assigned for the nation, it was his practice to give preference to people of excellence and virtue with his permission and its allotment according to the value of their religious merit. Some of them would have a single need, some of them would have two, uh, two needs, some of them would have multiple needs. He would therefore preoccupy himself with them and preoccupy them with what would benefit them and the nation in general, including questioning them about it and informing them of what would, have, what would be appropriate for them. Meaning having a uh, shura, you could say. He would say, let those amongst you who are present convey to those who are absent and convey to me the need of whosoever is unable to relay it in person because whosoever conveys a ruler, to a ruler the need of someone who is unable to convey it himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall make his feet firm on the day of resurrection. Meaning the responsibility of someone who is in need, if it is not fulfilled, then the uh, sultan or the ruler would be held accountable. Nothing but that will be mentioned in his presence and it will not be accepted from anyone other than him. They would enter as seekers, meaning ruwad, and only part after having, uh, only leave after having tasted something and emerge as guides, meaning to the goodness to the goodness وَيَخْرُجُونَ أَدِلَّةً يَعْنِي عَلَى الْخَيْرِ He said also then I asked him about how he was when he left his home what would he do in this regard Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would withhold his tongue from what he did not con what, what uh, did not concern him anything did not concern him he would just withhold his tongue because if, if there is no need to talk about anything that is insignificant, that is unnecessary, that is not fruitful, then there is no point talking about it. And he would bring people together and not alienate them, meaning separate them. He would honor the noble of each tribe and appoint him over them as leader. He would caution people and be wary of them without concealing his good humor and fine character. He would inquire about his Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and ask the people about their affairs. He would approve and whatever is good. Uh, uh, he would approve of whatever is good and support it. And he would disapprove of the vile and weaken it. Meaning he would shun it. He was equitable and not argumentative. He would rather avoid arguments. He remained vigilant lest others be negligent or deviate from the right path. He would remain vigilant, lest others be negligent or deviate from the right path. And he had a means of dealing with every situation. He would neither fall short of the truth nor overstep it, uh, uh, meaning over, uh, go beyond the limits. Those who followed him were the best of the people. Those who followed him were the best of the people and were the most virtuous. The best of them were in his, uh, in his eyes those who offered the most sincere advice, even to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And those holding the greatest rank were the most generous and helpful. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu further said, uh, uh, sorry, Al-Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu further said, then I asked him about his assemblies. So he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would neither stand up nor sit down without observing the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he would join an assembly of people, he would take whatever seat is, was available and he would instruct others to do the same. He would give each and every person who sat with him his share of time and attention. 
No one sitting with him would think that anyone else was dearer to him than him. Whosoever sat with him or to consult or to discuss with him about a need or any issue, he would bear with him patiently. He would have patience when dealing with someone. Whosoever asked him of a need, he would not turn him away without what he had requested or offering a word of comfort. Not to dishearten him, rather give him the word of comfort. His cheery constance, uh, uh, countenance and good character extended to all people such that he became a father to them and they became equal to him. His assembly was an assembly of knowledge, assembly of forbearance, modesty, trust and patience. Voices would not be raised therein. When, his assembly, when he was in an assembly, when he was in the gathering of the Sahaba. Okay, because as I mentioned earlier that the, it was an assembly of ilm, knowledge, salam, as well as hilm, meaning the forbearance, modesty, haya, as well as trust, amana, along with sabr, which is patience. So the voices would not be raised therein, nor would anyone's honor be tarnished. Everyone would have been honored. Okay. Nor were any mistakes broadcast, meaning bringing the sins of people and uh, uh, say it publicly. Okay, they would treat each other equally, contending with each other only in taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa taala, while showing what tawadu, while showing humility. They would honor the elderly and show compassion to the for the young, meaning being merciful to the young. They would give the needy preference over themselves and take good care of the ghuraba that are strangers. Okay, so وَيَحْفَظُونَ الْغَرِيبِ This is something that we learn from the uh, humility of Rasulullah in detail. As per the question of al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu to his father Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The hadith is, uh, you will find it uh, 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 at the very beginning of this book actually this very hadith again it is uh, it is just uh, reiterating the points of tawadu that is why the hadith is brought again here for the uh, for the for the chapter of tawadu as for the next hadith my brothers and sisters muhammad ibn abdullah ibn bazir narrated to us saying that bishr ibn al-mufaddal narrated to us he said that Saeed narrated to us from Qatada, who was a student of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْ أُهْدِيَ إِلَيَّ كُرَاعٌ لَقَبِلْتْ وَلَوْ دُعِيتُ عَلَيْهِ لَأَجَبْتْ That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a hoof was sent to me as a gift, I would accept. And if I was invited to partake of it, I would accept the invitation. This is recorded by Imam Muhammad ibn Isa at tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi in his uh, Sunan. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Muhammad ibn Bashar narrated to us saying that Abdurrahman narrated to us. He said that Sufiya narrated to us from Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir who narrated from Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that Ja'ani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laysa biraki bin baglin wala birdawn. The Rasulullah came to visit me while I was ill, yet he was neither riding a mule nor a non-Arabian horse. So, birdown means non-Arabian horse. This is, the, this is the word in this hadith, that birdown means that it is a horse that is non-Arab horse. Because to this day you would see those who are horse enthusiasts, those who are lover of horses, uh, uh, lovers of horses, you would see them to be taking pride in the Arab horses the most. This hadith, my brothers and sisters, is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, his student Imam Muslim ibn Hajjaj, along with Imam Muhammad ibn Isa al-Tirmidhi, rahimahumullahu rahmatan wasi'ah. As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman narrated to us, saying that Abu Nu'aym narrated to us, he said that Yahya ibn Abu al-Haytham al-Attar informed us. He said, informed us saying what? That Samir to Yusuf ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Salam. That I heard Abdullah, Yusuf ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Salam saying that Samani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yusuf, wa aqadani fi hijrihi wa masaha ala rasi. Okay? That Rasulullah, I heard Yusuf ibn Abdullah ibn, uh, ibn Salam 
narr- uh, saying radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam named me yusuf and he sat uh, sat me on his lap and wiped my head this is the mercy to the young ones this is the mercy to the young ones this was the mercy of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the young ones this was from his tawadu from his humilities okay this hadith is recorded by imam ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi in his musnad volume 16 page 404 as for the next hadith my brothers and sisters Ishaq ibn Mansur narrated to us saying that Abu Dawood of Tayalisi narrated to us saying that Ar Rabi' who is son of Sabih narrated to us saying that Yazid Ar Raqashi narrated to us from Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hajja ala rahlin rathin wa qatifa kunna nara thamanaha arba'at darahim falam mastawat bihi rahilatuhu 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 qala labbayka bi hajjatin la sum'ata fiha wa la riya the hadith those who would understand arabic we, we have been through that but it is a slightly a different narration here uh, where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed Hajj on a worn-out saddle upon which there was a fringed wrap around worth no more than four darahim, meaning four silver coins. He said, "Labbeka bi hajjatin la sumata fihi wa la At your service, O Allah, with a pilgrimage in which there is no desire for fame, sum'a, and no ostentation, meaning no showing off, no riya. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Ishaq ibn Mansur narrated to us, saying that Abdul Razak narrated to us, saying that Ma'man narrated to us from Thabit al-Bunani, who narrate, uh, and uh, from Thabit al-Bunani and from Asim al-Ahwal, both narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, anna rajulan khayyatan da'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqarraba minhu thiridan alayhi dubba. قال فكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يأخذ الدباء وكان يحب الدباء قال ثابت فسمعت أنس يقول فما صنع لي طعام أقدر على أن يصنع فيه دباء إلا صنع A tailor invited Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and served him a dish soft, uh, soft bread dish soft bread S-O-P-P-E-D bread that is soft with soft bread, meat, and broth, therid, that is the Arabic for broth, with some pumpkin, dubba, uh, uh, on it. Rasulullah used to love pumpkin. Sabit said, uh, those, uh, one of the students of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sabit said that, I heard Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu saying, after that, no dish was prepared for me, wherein if pumpkin could be added, was added. Any dish that Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu had, it was with the pumpkin. So much so that because he loved, he saw Rasulullah loving the pumpkin. Okay. This is actually narrated, recorded by Imam Muslim ibn Hajjaj rahimahullah ta'ala in his sahih. Next hadith, rather it is the last hadith of this chapter. Muhammad ibn Ismail narrated to us saying that Abdullah ibn Salih narrated to us saying that Muawiyah ibn Salih narrated to us from Yahya ibn Sa'id who narrated from Amra. She said that Qila li Aisha. It was said for to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, anha Mada kana ya'mal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi bayti. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to do at home? Like usual practice. She replied قالت كان بشرا من البشر يفلي ثوبه ويحلب شاته ويخدم نفسه He was a man from amongst men He used to examine and amend his clothes milk his sheep and serve himself It is nothing extraordinary Normal So Can you please turn the switch on Sorry Malish So this was the daily lifestyle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, that one. Barakallahu Fiqh. So this is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. Because people were expecting him uh, to, uh, that he would do something extraordinary. Whereas it was not the case. It is just normal lifestyle. What he had, he would just uh, do as a normal human being. And among them was 
that he would use to examine and amend his clothes. Maybe ironing it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Milk his sheep and serve himself. Okay. This is actually recorded by Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi in Al-Adab al-Mufrad. Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi has a book called Al-Adab al-Mufrad. In it he brings, the, uh, uh, brings this hadith. Next chapter, my brothers and sisters, is about khuluq Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Khuluq Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The first hadith that is here in this chapter that Abbas ibn Muhammad al duri narrated to us saying that Abdullah ibn Yazid al muqri narrated to us saying that Layth ibn Sa'ad narrated to us saying that Abu Uthman al-Walid ibn Abi al-Walid narrated to me from Sulaiman ibn Kharija from Kharija ibn Zaid ibn Thabit who said دخل نفر على Zaid ibn Thabit فقالوا حدثنا أحاديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ماذا أحدثكم كنت جاره فكان إذا نزل عليه الوحي بعث إلي فكتبته له فكنا إذا ذكرنا الدنيا ذكرها معنا وإذا ذكرنا الآخرة ذكرها معنا وإذا ذكرنا الطعام ذكره معنا فكل هذا أحدثكم عن, رس عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم A group of people, so nafar, the word nafar is actually something you would see, it is between three and ten, nine or ten people, okay, or some, uh, it, that is the common understanding in Arabic language, okay, however, there are people who would use the word nafar uh, to uh, say even one person, whereas in reality, from the technical aspect, from the lingu uh, uh, language aspect, nafar means a group of people that would be at least three, maximum ten, or a uh, 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 from three onwards, let's say. Okay. A group of people came to visit Zaid ibn Thabit. Okay. His father. And said to him, Relate to us the traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He replied, What shall I relate to you? What should I narrate to you? As I was his neighbor, whenever he received revelation, wahi, he would summon me and I would write it down for him. Whenever we would mention this world, he would mention them along with us. And whenever we would mention the Akhirah, he would mention it along with us. And whenever we would mention food, he would mention it along with us. So I should relate to you what the Rasulullah had, had to say regarding all of this. This is recorded by uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Isa Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala in Sunan al-Kubra, having said that the hadith is uh, the chain, not the hadith, the chain is weak. But in Bab al we can see the benefits of some of the uh, uh, some of the manners or the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Ishaq ibn Musa narrated to us saying that Yunus ibn Bukayn narrated to us from Muhammad ibn Ishaq, who narrated from Ziyad ibn Abu Ziyad, who narrated from Muhammad ibn Ka'b al-Quradi, who narrated from Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقبل بوجهه بوجهه وحديثه على أشر القوم يتألفهم بذلك فكان يقبل بوجهه وحديثه علي حتى ظننت أني خير القوم فقلت يا رسول الله أنا خير أو أبو بكر قال أبو بكر فقلت يا رسول الله أنا خير أو عمر فقال عمر فقلت يا رسول الله أنا خير أو عثمان قال عثمان فلما سألت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فصدقني فلولدت أني لم أكن سألته رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم used to speak directly with the worst of people like no sugar coating <laughs> no sugar coating thereby winning their hearts he used to do the same with me until I thought I was the best of the people. So I asked, Ya Rasulullah, am I better? Am I better or Abu Bakr? He said Abu Bakr. Then I asked, Ya Rasulullah, am I better or Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu? He said Umar. Then I asked, Ya Rasulullah, am I better or Uthman ibn Affan? Then he said Uthman. Whenever I asked Rasulullah he told me the truth. So I wished I had not asked him. I wished I had not asked him.
The hadith is recorded uh, in Tahzib al Kamal. Having said that, the the hadith is weak. Not the chain, the hadith is weak here. But in Bab al Targhib, if we look at it, even though now people, those who oppose Rasulullah's Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, they actually uh, don't understand the meaning of what Rasulullah's respect towards other Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in he had. Everyone was given the right, everyone was honored. So, next hadith, my brothers and sisters. Qutaybah ibn Sa'id narrated to us saying that Ja'far ibn Sulaiman al-Dubai narrated to us from Thabit who was a student of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, he narrated from Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said khadamtu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashra sinin when I was saying that he was ten, uh, uh, khadam of Rasulullah sallam for 10 years this is the dalil khadamtu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashra sinin فَمَا قَالَ لِي أُفٍ قَطْ وَمَا قَالَ لِشَيْءٍ صَنَعْتُهُ لِمَا صَنَعْتَهُ وَلَا لِشَيْءٍ تَرَكْتُهُ لِمَا تَرَكْتَهُ وَكَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ مِنْ أَحْسَنِ النَّاسِ خُلُقًا وَلَا مَسَسْتُ خَزَّةً وَلَا حَرِيرًا وَلَا شَيْءٍ كَانَ أَلْيَنَ مِنْ كَفِّ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَلَا شَمَمْتُ مِسْكًا قَطْ وَلَا عِطْرًا كَانَ أَطْيَبَ مِنْ عَرَقِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ I served Rasulullah for 10 years and uh, he never said oof to me. He never asked me about something I had done. Saying, what did you do? Nor about something I had left undone. Saying, why did you leave it undone? Rasulullah was the best of the people in khuluq, in character. I never felt any silk or anything at all. That was softer than the palm meaning the cuff of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I never smelled any musk nor any perfume more fragrant than the perspiration, meaning the arq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, who was the student of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi as well as Imam Muslim, who was the student of Imam al-Bukhari, then Abu Dawud rahmatullahi alayhi, along with Imam al-Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi. Next hadith from the khulq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that Qutaybah ibn Sa'id narrated to us along with Ahmad ibn Abda who was Dabbi wal ma'na wahid qala they both said that Hamad ibn Zayd narrated to us from Sal Salm al-Alawi who narrated from Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Salm al-Alawi was the student of Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated from the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam annahu kana 'indahu rajulun به أثر صفرة قال وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يكاد يواجه أحدا بشيء يكرهه فلما قام قال للقوم لو قلتم له يدع هذه الصفرة. According to the Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم there was a man with Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم who had a trace of saffron upon him or on his garment. And since Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم could barely confront someone with something on him that he found disgusting. So when he got up and left, he وسلم, said to the people, if only you would tell him to get rid of this saffron. Okay, this is uh, recorded by Imam Abu Dawud, rahmatullahi alayhi. the chain of this hadith is weak. Saffron is a color, or it is zafran, you could say in Arabic. Okay, Sufra. Saffron is a color that is specific to the kuffar or their religion and therefore why Rasulullah disliked it. Something to be worn. Isn't it like yellow? Yes, Sufra here, uh, uh, that is what it means, yellow clothes. Okay, this was actually uh, Rasulullah uh, Rasul disliked it. The disliked. Is it uh, in cooking, cooking or something like that? No, no uh, cooking is different. He is uh, talking about the, something to be worn. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is uh, uh, sometimes you would see the saffron is something that mm. but here we are talking about yellow color, turmeric, for example. Oh, okay. We are talking about the turmeric itself, or oh, so sufra. Okay, so here he said that okay, to remove the yellow, okay, yeah, you could say that uh, dying color. Sometimes people use that yellow color to dye. Okay. 
<laughs> we see nowadays. We see we see nowadays what they use. Even uh, unfortunately, even in Indian subcontinent, they go next level as well. Okay, <laughs> billah. So that is what Rasulullah disliked the sufra, the yellow. Not the, uh, uh, the color itself, I'm talking about something on the garment or something on the skin so that, you know, Rasulullah uh, wouldn't have been displeased. Okay. Next hadith is from Muhammad ibn Bashar. He narrated to us saying that Muhammad ibn Ja'far narrated to us saying that Shu'ba narrated to us from Abu Ishaq who narrated from Ab Abu Abdullah al-Jadali and his name is Abd ibn Abd who was a student of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and Aisha. Annaha qalat, she said, Lam yakun Rasulullah sallallahu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fahishan wala mutafahisha wala sakhaban fil aswaq wala yajzi bi sayyati sayyah walakin ya'fu wa yasfah That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was neither obscene nor immoral fahish and mutafahish He was neither obscene nor was he uh, uh, an immoral nor boisterous, meaning uh, sakhab, okay, nor boisterous, meaning sakhab, in the markets, boisterous in the markets, and he would not repay a wrong with anything that is wrong. He would not repay wrong with anything that is wrong, but rather he would pardon, meaning he would forgive and overlook that. This is recorded by Imam Muhammad ibn Isa Tirmidhi along with Imam Ahmad uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters. Harun ibn Ishaq al-Hamdani narrated to us saying that Abda narrated to us from Hisham ibn Urwa who narrated from his father Urwa who was a student of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said that ma darab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi yadihi shay'an qattu illa an yujahida fi sabilillah wa la darab khadima wa la mra'ah. The Rasulullah SAW never struck anything with his hand unless he happened to be fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the battles. Nor did he ever strike a servant or a woman. It is recorded by Imam Muslim ibn Hajjaj. It is recorded by Abu Dawood. It is recorded by Ibn Majah. Rahimahumullahu rahmatahu wasa'ah. Next hadith. Ahmad ibn Abdah al dabbi narrated to us saying that Fudail ibn Ayyad narrated to us from Mansur who narrated from Az-Zuhri who narrated from Urwa who was who narrated from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said ma ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muntasiran min madlamatin dhulimaha qat ma lam yuntahak min maharim Allah ta'ala shay fa idha tuhika min maharim Allah shay كان من أشدهم في ذلك غضبا وما خير بين أمرين إلا اختار أيسرهما ما لم يكن مأثما I never saw Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم take revenge for a wrong committed wrong committed against him as long as Allah سبحانه وتعالى's prohibitions were not violated if any of the prohibitions of Allah were violated he would be enraged he would be angry. Whenever he was given the choice between two matters, he would choose the easier of the two so long as it was not a sin. Okay? So those who talk about, you know, for example, democracy is lesser of two evil, parting one of the two parties. <laughs> that is on its own is not sin, rather it is shirk. It is even beyond the uh, millah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So, People use this as an excuse, as an evidence that Rasulullah if he were to given two choices, he would choose the easier, uh, easier of the two. But he doesn't mention the rest of the part. Which means that as long as it was not a sin. He didn't, he, people don't mention it. So they would use part of it and the other part they would not use it. And that is one of the traits of Yahud. The way that they conceal as they, they used to read Torah to Rasulullah what they used to do, they, uh, they, uh, they used to put finger on it so that they don't read that part. We are seeing that amongst the Muslims. Allah al-Musta'an. This hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari. He is a student of Muslim ibn Hajjaj along with Abu Dawood. Rahmatullahi alayhi majma'in. Next hadith. 
son of Abu Umar narrated to us, saying that Sufyan narrated to us from Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir, who narrated from Urwa, who was a student of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said that, إِسْتَأْذَنَ رَجُلٌ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ وَأَنَا عِنْدَهُ فقال بئس ابن العشيرة أو أخو العشيرة ثم أذن له فأل فألان له القول فلما خرج قلت يا رسول الله قلت ما قلت ثم ألنت له القول فقال يا عائشة إن من شر الناس من تركه الناس أو ودعه الناس اتقاء فحشه a man sought permission to come in to see رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم while I was with him Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anaha was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, what a vile man he is. What an evil man he is. Then he gave him permission to enter. And when he entered, he spoke to him gently. After he had left, I said, Ya Rasulullah, you said what you said. And then he spoke to him gently. He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Aisha, one of the worst of people is one whom the people avoid to protect themselves from his ill manners. So the person who came to the house of Rasulullah was known to be of ill manners. But Rasulullah said what he had to say, that what an evil man he is. Yet he was not evil when he was talking to. Rasulullah was not evil, rather he spoke to him gently. With this very person who was evil. That is why he said, إِنَّ مِنْ شَرِّ النَّاسِ مَنْ تَرَكَهُ النَّاسِ أَوْ وَدَعَهُ النَّاسِ اتِّقَاءَ فُحْشِ In another hadith it would be اتِّقَاءَ شَرِّ Okay, this hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and Imam al-Tirmidhi, rahimahumullah. As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Sufyan ibn Waqi' narrated to us saying that Jumayr ibn Umair ibn Abdurrahman al-Ijli narrated to us. He said that a man from Banu Tamim who was uh, Walad Abu Hala, Zawj Khadija, who is Abu Abdullah, who uh, uh, son of Ibn Hala, who narrated from Al-Hasan ibn Ali. He said, Qala Al-Husayn, Husayn radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Sa'altu Abi an sirat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi julasai. Faqal, kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'im al-bishr, sahal al-khulq, layin al-janib, laysa bifaddin, wala ghalid, wala sakhabin, wala fahash, wala ayyabin, wala mushah, yatagafalu amma la yashtahi, wala yu... يؤيسوا منه راجيه ولا يخيب فيه قد ترك نفسه من ثلاث المراء والإكثار وما لا يعنيه وترك الناس من ثلاث كان لا يذم أحدا ولا يعيبه ولا يطلب عورته ولا يتكلم إلا فيما رجى ثوابه وإذا تكلم أطرق جلساؤه كأنما على رؤوسهم الطير فإذا سكت تكلموا لا يتنازعون عنده الحديث ومن تكلم عنده أنصت له حتى يفرغ حديث حتى يفرغ حديثهم عنده حديث أولهم حديث أولهم يضحك مما يضحكون منه ويتعجب مما يتعجبون منه ويصبر ويصبر للغريب على الجفوة في منطقه ومسألته حتى إن كان أصحابه لا يستجلبونهم ويقول إذا رأيتم طالب حاجة يطلبها فأرفدوه ولا يقبل الثناء إلا مكافئ ولا يقطع على أحد حديثه حتى يجوز فيقطعه بنهي أو قيام الحسين رضي الله تعالى عنه said grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that I asked my father about the conduct of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa amongst those who would sit with him in a majlis. So he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was always cheerful. He was always easygoing and mild-mannered. He was neither harsh nor hard-hearted. Uh, cold heart, like really, the heart, he was, he was not cold. Ghalid. Nor boisterous. Sakhab, nor obscene. He was not Fahash, he was not Sakhab, he was not Ghalid, he was not with uh, 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 Fadh. Nor fault finding. Ayab meaning finding faults to humiliate other people, embarrass other people. He was not like that, Rasulullah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nor uh, avaricious, meaning Mushah. He would take no interest in what he did, nor desire. He would not leave anyone who pleaded with him, hopeless and disappointed. There were three things he, he avoided. Hypocrisy. He avoided uh, ikthar, which is excessiveness. Okay. And leaving what did not concern him. 
Similarly, he would not rebuke anyone, nor criticize him, nor pry into his personal affairs. Not be uh, uh, prying into his personal affairs. He would only stay that uh, he would only say that in which he hoped for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he spoke, those sitting with him would lower their heads in such a manner as if they were, there were birds sitting on their heads. And only when he fell silent, they would speak. They would not argue with each other in his presence, presence of Rasulullah They would remain silent for him to speak until he finished speaking. The first of them would be the first to speak before him. He would laugh at whatever made them laugh and express surprise at whatever surprised them. He used to exercise sabr, patience with a stranger's rough manner of his speaking or questioning so much that so much so that his sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in would bring them he used to say if you see someone in need then assist him he would only accept praise in moderation and he would not interrupt someone who was speaking unless he overstepped a limit cross the limit in which case he would interrupt him with a prohibition or by standing up and leaving like leaving the majlis into, uh, entirely this is something that uh, came in the beginning of this book, uh, Hadith number 8, uh, uh, about the khulq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Al-Hasan radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, asked uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he was describing it to him. Next Hadith, my brothers and sisters, Muhammad ibn Bashar narrated to us, saying that Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi narrated to us, saying that Sufyan narrated to us from Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir, who said that I heard Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu yaqul, uh, saying, Ma su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shay'an qattun, faqala la. That I heard that Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, anhu saying that never did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say no to anyone who asked for something of him. This is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari and his student Imam Muslim ibn Hajjaz rahimahumullah. As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Abdullah ibn Imran, Abu al-Qasim al-Qurashi al-Makki narrated to us, saying that Ibrahim ibn Sa'ad narrated to us from Ibn Shihab, who narrated from Ubaid, uh, Ubaidullah, who narrated from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, after the death of Rasulullah who lived in, uh, in Mecca. He said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس بالخير وكان أجود ما يكون في شهر رمضان حتى ينسلخ فيأتيه جبريل فيعرض عليه القرآن فإذا لقيه جبريل كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود بالخير من الريح المرسلة Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was the most generous of people in charity and he was most charitable in the month of Ramadan until it came to an end. Jibreel would come to him alayhi salam and he would recite to him the Quran. When Jibreel would meet him, Rasulullah would be most generous in charity than the winds sent with sh showering rain. Like excessiveness in charity, subhanAllah. This is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Rahimahumullah. Next hadith, Qutaybah ibn Sa'id narrated to us saying that Ja'far ibn Sulaiman narrated to us from Thabit who narrated from Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Thabit here is the student, was the student of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that Kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayyad dakhilu shay'an ligad. That Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never restored anything for, tomorrow, uh, for the morrow. Meaning he would do what is needed to be done immediately and he would not leave things for the next time or for tomorrow. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters. Harun ibn Musa ibn Abu Alqamah al-Madini narrated to us saying that Haddathani Abi, meaning Musa ibn Abu Alqamah al-Madini, who narrated from Hisham ibn Sa'ad, who narrated from Zayd ibn Aslam, who narrated from his father Aslam, who narrated from Amir al-Mu'minin Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. أن رجلا جاء إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فسأله أن يعطيه فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما عندي شيء ولكن ابتع علي. فإذا جاءني شيء قضيته فقال عمر يا رسول الله قد أعطيته فما كفل كلفك الله ما لا تقدر عليه فكره النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قول عمر فقال رجل من الأنصار يا رسول الله أنفق ولا تخف من ذي العرش إقلالا فتبسم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعرف في وجهه البشر لقول الأنصاري ثم قال بهذا أمرت a man came to Prophet وسلم, and asked him to give, a, give him a gift. So the Prophet وسلم, said, I do not have anything with me, but purchase at my expense. And when something came, comes my way, I will settle the debt. 
Umar radiallahu ta'ala who said, Ya Rasulullah, you have already given him. Allah has not burdened you with what is beyond your means. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa disliked this statement of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Whereupon a man from Al-Ansar, from al Madina, he said, Ya Rasulullah, spend and fear, do not fear poverty from the Lord of the throne. Whereupon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa smiled and it was clear from the look on his face that he was pleased with the words of Al-Ansari. Then he said, this is what I have been commanded to do. Rasulullah said, This is what I have been commanded to do. This is recorded by Imam al Bazar. However, the hadith is uh, weak. Having said that, you can take the benefit of generosity here. How he was from the Ajwad nas how he was generous. Okay, and he would not say no to anybody. Next hadith Ali ibn Hujur narrated to us from Sharik. He said that Akhbarana Sharik. Sharik informed us from Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Aqil, who narrated from Ar Rubayyah bint Mu'awwid ibn Afra. She said, Ataytu Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, biqinaim min rutab, wa ajrin zogbin, fa'atani mil akafihi, huliyan wa dahaba. We have been through this hadith before, uh, four or five weeks or even more than that. That I came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a tray of fresh ripe dates and pieces of cucumber. He gave me a handful of jewelry, or she said gold. This is recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad. Last hadith of this chapter, my brothers and sisters, Ali ibn Khashram, Waghair Wahid, and another one, they narrated to us, they said that Isa ibn Yunus narrated to us from Hisham ibn Urwa, who narrated from his father Urwa, who was a student of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said, Anna Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yaqbalu al-hadiyyata wa yuthibu alayha. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to accept gifts and reciprocate them. This is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahumullah. Inshallah in the next halaqa we'll go through haya rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the modesty of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm upon the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us uh izza by following the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise us on the day of qiyamah with rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the companionship of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al jannah allahumma ameen hadha ma indi wal ilm inda allah alayhi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi unib in asabt fa min allah wahda wa in akhtat fa min nafsi wa shaytan fa allah wa rasuluhu bari'an wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته